This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we get into part three of the Arcom RC210 Advanced Repeater Controller Build. We purchased a kit, now we have to put on some final components and then run some tests to make sure that the controller will work correctly. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. <laughs> Well, it's time to put on a few of those other components and wrap this project up. Folks, don't be afraid to take on a project like this. And if you are thinking your soldering skills are lacking, this is a reason to get involved in a club because there's a really good chance somebody in the club is really good at this. Now, what we're doing here is we're looking over the board at everything that's been soldered on. And one of the things you wanna be careful of is to make sure that you're not shorting any of the pins. We used a magnifying glass with a really bright light to make sure that we didn't have any shorts. And I found one that I thought was pretty darn close if it wasn't a short. So AC4DM is going in and cleaning this up to make sure that we're not gonna have a shorted connection between two pins. After looking over the board, that seemed to be the only one. So we're gonna wrap that up, get a little flux off of there, and we're ready to do some voltage checks. Now the documentation that comes with the RC210 is quite good and one of the things that we needed to check is voltage coming in is going where it needs to go. So we plugged it in and we got our multimeter out and we started checking do we have the voltages that are called out on the documentation. So here you can see uh, from IC pins and uh, other locations, Where what should the voltage be? Uh, and if it's not that voltage, then we have a problem somewhere. So you can see from five volts to 12 volts to 3.3 volts is what we're gonna be looking for at various places on the PC board. So coming into the PC board, we're at 12.3 volts. So that's input voltage. On the other side of the diode, we should see just a little bit less than that. Diodes are usually going to have a consumption of 0.7, so that's exactly what we saw. There's the voltage regulator, and there's one of the five volts we're supposed to see from the regulator. And then on this particular pin, we're supposed to see that same five volts. So everything's checking really well. Now we go from ground to another IC chip, and we're supposed to see 11.6. Very close. Here we're going from chip to chip and we're supposed to see a specific voltage. What did we get? 5.78, which is exactly what we're supposed to see. And from a chip to another point on the chip, three volts or 3.3 volts plus or minus. Now our voltage checks are out of the way. We can install the actual ICs, the little chips. We didn't want to install these before we knew the correct voltages were there. So now we can install the chips. We'll disconnect the power and install each of these ch chips. And you want to be really careful. You can see the empty sockets, various sizes of chips with various numbers of pins. So we started pulling the chips out of their plastic sleeves, either ESD bags or the harder plastic to keep the pins from being bent. And we begin the process of carefully installing these ICs. One of the things, uh, again, you want to be careful of if you haven't done this sort of thing is to make sure your pins are lined up and in a row. And uh, AC4DM has done this many, many times. So he's really careful. And then we inspect that install chip to make sure none of the pins uh, were bent outwards or inwards. You want to make sure that they're installed correctly. And uh, the uh, cool thing about the uh, uh, the camera view here is we can see how well that uh, seat the, that chip seated. And then we did two more just like it. So the documentation will tell you which chips, and of course the pins will line up. So it's looking good so far. We got the first three chips installed that were called out on the documentation. We had another chip that does a different function just below the first three. So again, we're just double checking those pins to make sure they didn't bend outward or inward. Looking good. Two more chips towards the middle of the board and you can see we've still got some empty sockets there. And now we have everything installed. This board is complete. 
voltage voltages check out chips are installed where they're supposed to be leds are installed connectors are installed over three to four sessions the pc board has everything on it that it's supposed to have this is the picture of what the board looked like minus the uh, sockets there in the top right so a lot of work has gone into soldering those components on the board and this will give you some practice of your solder skills ac4dm also ordered the chassis for the controller uh, from Arcom, so you can see the on-off switch and the ribbon cable that goes with it needs to be attached to the board as we'll see a little bit later. We didn't quite have that on there correctly. And there's some standoffs inside the chassis there to make sure that the board sits there in, in there, not touching the aluminum chassis directly, except at the four corners where the screws are going in to anchor the board to that location. You might wonder why there's extra real estate over there to the left. Uh, there are the, there's the potential for adding some additional boards in there. Uh, Arcom just released a new uh, board to provide even more ports for being able to manage even more devices. Make sure you finger tighten these screws. There's no need to over tighten these. Just make sure that they're finger tight and uh, this chassis is not going to be in a vibration environment, but the over, over torquing on the board could crack, so you don't want to, uh, to do too much tightening there, just finger tight. We also ordered the faceplate for the controller, but one of the things AC4DM noticed also is that that screw hole right in the middle is not going to actually work with our rack. So he used a drill press to put two holes on each side. And now we go about the process of installing the faceplate to the chassis, making sure we don't pinch the wire there on the front side that represents the on-off switch. It's a good looking unit with that faceplate on there and all the LEDs lined up that KY4CKP soldered onto the board. So that's basically the unit. We don't have the top plate on just yet, but we need to run a check, make sure that it's going to work. But it, it does look nice. It just has the one on off switch there on the left. And you can see some of the uh, naming there. We've got PTT, COS, CT, CSS, and DTMF lights. We did purchase one additional option and that's the real time clock. This is shipped completely uh, put together. So you don't actually have to solder this guy at all. Uh, and it's an easy push on to some pins that are already present on the PC board. Just want to be careful, make sure you have enough light and don't be in a hurry when you push this on. See the connector on the bottom and then AC4DM is going to bring that light over to make sure that he can get the pins lined up correctly. The real time clock will ensure that announcements of the time will be accurate and even if this unit loses power, the little battery there will ensure that the time is not lost. Similar to what you would see in a computer. So now we're going to attach a programming cable uh, from serial to USB into the laptop and uh, we'll do a quick program. But we were having some issues and when we powered it on, no lights were coming on. And that's when we uh, discovered the little ribbon cable that goes to the board from the on off switch was backwards. But once we got it straight, And that lets us know that, as far as we can tell, everything's running just fine. We did some minor programming just so that we could get, uh, we could check the communications and so forth. Everything looked great. And so now it's just a matter of putting the top plate on and getting ready to program this for the monocello repeater. Folks, take on projects like this with your club. It teaches you soldering skills, uh, reading through your documentation, doing it correctly, and it's a great learning experience it, to reading schematics and so forth. These types of projects also help you have newer equipment in your shack that usually you'll have older equipment that needs replacing. This is a modern controller. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. Hope you've enjoyed this series. We'll see this controller in the future. 73.